Did you kill Grace Mullane? No. Okay. Jesse Kempson, you're under arrest for the murder. How did the evening pan out? Um. Mm, yeah. We actually don't know if she's been murdered or not yet. She may be alive and well. Okay. But she might also be dead. Okay. Okay. And it could be that you've done it. Moments later, after being left alone in the interview room. Hey, I just want to ask a question. Have I been arrested for something I didn't do? You ever been arrested for? Oh. Oh. Oh, sorry. Holy shit. You've indicated that you're willing to speak to us about the events of last Saturday. Is that correct? Yes. Tell me what happened last Saturday. Um, from the beginning? Yeah. You find the defendant, Jesse Shane Kempson, guilty or not guilty? Guilty. On a daily basis, I torment myself over what you did to my grace. The terror and pain he must have experienced at your hands as a mother, I would have done anything to change places with her. I sit full of guilt, knowing I couldn't help her. But I should have been there. She died terrified and alone in a room with you. After the sentencing, the detective inspector who led the investigation into Grace Mullane's disappearance, Scott Beard, told Checkpoint he thought it was inevitable Jesse Kempson would kill someone. I've always thought that if it wasn't Grace, it was going to be someone. Um, now, I'm not a psychologist, so I can't talk about psychological profile, but what we do know is he's a liar. You know, a number of times we've proved he lied to the police, he lied to others. The New Zealand man who callously murdered a British backpacker can finally be named just one month after the death of the victim's father, David Millane. It was revealed he had earlier raped another British tourist and had a record of violence towards women. Jesse Shane Kempson, the killer, can now be named two years after he murdered the British citizen. He was born on December 28, 1991, in Lower Hutt, and grew up in Wellington. Kempson's parents split when he was just three, and for a time, he was brought up by his grandparents. In about 2013, he moved to Australia, seemingly developing an Australian twang in his accent. But it remains unclear exactly what Kempson did or where he may have worked in Australia. He returned from Sydney in 2016 for what, he claimed, was to care for a sick grandmother in the Auckland suburb of Takanini. Jesse Kempson, aged 28, was given a life sentence for strangling Grace Millane in an Auckland hotel room in 2018 and burying her body in a shallow grave west of New Zealand's biggest city. Kempson enjoyed name suppression during and after the trial, and only today was that New Zealand's Supreme Court lifted the order. Jesse is a convicted murderer and rapist, and pathological liar, according to friends and acquaintances. Kempson said to be estranged from his mother, has been accused of frequently lying about his wealth and career before the murder of Grace Millane. He then lied to the police in a desperate attempt to cover his tracks. Lying was a trait of Kempson's described throughout his court proceedings. In an attempt to conceal the facts, Kempson would sprinkle in elements of truth to his labyrinth of storytelling and lies, as Auckland's Crown solicitor Brian described. Kempson told police he worked in sales for consulting firm Liquid Learning. Some of Kempson's more outrageous lies included claiming to be a manager at an oil company, a law graduate, having gang connections, being an orphan, being the cousin of an all-black, and even that he had cancer. He picked many of these falsehoods apart during the nearly four-week-long murder trial, which caught the attention of a global audience. One of the further offences that Kempson was found guilty of was the rape of another British tourist just months before Ms. Millane's death. According to The Guardian, the victim was also a British tourist who he met on the dating app Tinder. The paper says he raped the tourist when she refused sex after a date. Kempson was also convicted of threatening to kill, two charges of assault with a weapon, three assaults, 
and two counts of sexual violation by unlawful sexual connection at a trial in October, court documents state. Kempson was granted the right to keep his name secret through the court proceedings as his defense counsel argued naming him would prevent him from getting a fair trial. After appeal, he won an interim name suppression order with the judge who presided over the trial extending this. It was anticipated that Kempson would be named following his guilty verdict in 2019. Still, the New Zealand national was granted anonymity until he was convicted of further violent crimes on Tuesday. Publications outside of New Zealand had already named the killer before the suppression order was lifted. Jesse Kempson murdered Ms. Millane by strangling her in a hotel in Auckland after meeting her via Tinder on December 1, 2018 the day before her 22nd birthday. Moments after murdering British backpacker Grace Millane, her killer reached for his cell phone. But instead of dialing 111 for an ambulance, Jesse Shane Kempson used his phone to search for degrading and demeaning pornography. Later on Ms. Millane's body was found in a suitcase buried in a forested area outside the city. The man claimed Ms. Millane died accidentally after the pair engaged in rough sex that went too far. However, the jury in November rejected that argument and found Jesse guilty. Since then, he has been found guilty of a raft of charges relating to subjecting a former partner to repeated violence and raping another woman he dated in a motel room. However, the Crown sought to have the exact nature of Kempson's internet searches put before the jury. Arguing, they provided an insight into the killer's state of mind shortly after murdering Grace. The surprise here is that he was not in panic mode but looking at pornography and taking intimate photos of her body. From the beginning, it was a three-week trial in the High Court in Auckland late last year. The jury watched CCTV footage of Jesse Kempson and Grace Moline on their Tinder date in Central Auckland bar hopping, drinking, and eventually kissing. They went back to the Kempson department at the City Life Hotel, walking into the lobby together. Kempson arm around Miss Moline's shoulders the last time she was seen alive. The Crown said, Kempson, strangled Miss Moline to death. Still, the defense argued her death was an accident during consensual rough sex. CCTV footage showed Kempson buying a suitcase and cleaning products, hiring a carpet cleaning machine, picking up a rental car, and driving out to West Auckland to buy a shovel. Kempson said he panicked, putting her body in a suitcase and burying it in a shallow grave in the White Arcady Ranges, but the jury didn't believe him. In February, Jesse Kempson was jailed for life with a minimum non-parole period of 17 years. At Kempson's sentencing, Grace May Lane's mother, Jillian, delivered her victim impact statement to the court via an audiovisual link from her home in England daily. Torment me over what you did to my grades, the terror. He must have experienced at your hands as a mother. I would have done anything, change places with a city full of guilt, knowing I couldn't help her but I should have been there. He died, terrified and alone, in a room with you. After the sentencing, the detective inspector who led the investigation into Grace's disappearance, Scott, told Checkpoint he thought it was inevitable. Jesse Kempson would kill someone. You know, many times we proved he lied to the police, he lied to others. The lapsing of name suppression means it can now be revealed. Jesse Kempson had other victims and women had abused before. After one woman, an ex-girlfriend, went to the police and told them he had subjected her to sustain escalating physical, sexual, emotional, and financial abuse. When her case went to trial, she said her heart dropped when she saw the first blurred images of Kempson on the news, and she said she felt guilty about Malene's death. I didn't want to bring up my past again but I also want the truth to be out about who Jesse is and the passion for behavior, and how this whole thing could have been avoided. Kempson was found guilty of eight charges relating to that woman, including two a sexual violation and one of threatening to kill and jailed for 7.5 years at the other trial. He was found guilty of raping another woman he had met on Tinder in a motel. When the verdict was delivered, Kempson lashed out at justice. You have no reason to convict, you're full of shit. Justice had this to say, 
it's apparent from your response to the verdict of the court. You do not accept the offending, and you have no remorse or insight into it. Justice also cited a cultural report about Jesse Kempson that was submitted to the court by his lawyer. He said it was difficult to see any link between Kemp's sins, disconnection from his culture, and his offending. It offered insights into his troubled upbringing. Your parents separated when you were three years old. Your father was at times violent towards you. Although I note he has now written in support of you. Your mother rejected you. That may go some way towards explaining your attitude towards women. Jesse Kempson is appealing his conviction and sentence in both sexual violation cases. The Court of Appeal rejected his bid to overturn his conviction and sentence for murdering Grace Moline. He has already indicated he's likely to appeal that to the Supreme Court. His additional prison sentences will be served simultaneously, alongside his life term for murdering Millane, which includes a non-parole period of 17 years. Kempson will be 45 years old when he is first eligible for release in 2037. He was charged with the new offenses after Millane's murder, and police had talked to the two victims, both of whom have permanent name suppression. His first court appearance on the additional charges in February 2019 was held in a closed courtroom. Only the lawyers involved in the case and the Herald, as the only attending media organization, permitted to remain. Kempson has continued to deny the allegations and is appealing his convictions from the two trials, including nine total charges of rape, sexual violation, threatening to kill, and assault.